Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Speed Force Media Podcast. My name is Derek. My name is Eleanor. The SFM Pod is the show where me and my wife, Eleanor, sit down and discuss the biggest news of the week in the world of comic book movies and TV, 4 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, every Wednesday. This week, we have a lot of great topics to go over, as well as, of course, a game we like to play called Buy or Sell. But before we get into it, if you're a fan of DC, Marvel, horror, then please consider subscribing as it truly helps support the channel and reach more listeners like you. And we truly, truly appreciate it. If you guys ever want to get a topic or question on the show, it's very simple. Simply comment on this video or any of the SFM pod segments following and you might see your topic here on the show next Wednesday. And if you are interested in an audio-only format, we're also on Spotify, Samsung Podcast, Amazon Music, and a couple of other uh, podcasting services, excuse me. And if you leave us a five-star review, it does help us reach more listeners like you, so we would appreciate it. Thank you so much. And it is awesome to have you here, despite all of the drama the last couple it's of weeks. It's been rather dreary. It's been rough go for DC. Yeah, it has been. It's been really saddening, at least for me, and I know for a lot of other people, it's been really upsetting. It's really nice that uh, at least one good thing for Henry Cavill, he is getting his flowers while he can see them, right? I mean, right. he not just the fans, but other people in Hollywood are out. N- there's an outpour of support right. for Henry Cavill. Even William Shatner said, when right. one door closes, another window will open, and... It's awesome that he's at least able to get that. And, of course, he's got Warhammer 4K coming, so good for him. Good for him. All right, so starting off today's show is going to be Buy or Sell, a rapid-fire round where I give you and Eleanor a certain topic regarding DC or Marvel, and you simply buy or sell. Whether you believe it's going to happen, you sell that you don't think it's going to happen, you buy that you want it to happen, or you sell and you don't think it's a good idea. All right, and starting off with number one. So we got two actors in this, Michael Rosenbaum and Stephen Amell. Michael Rosenbaum recently said that he wants to return as Lex Luthor in the DCU for James Gunn. Stephen Amell also confirmed he would be up for returning as Oliver Queen, a.k.a. Green Arrow for James Gunn's DCU. Eleanor, buy or sell, do you think that this was going to happen and would you want it to happen? Okay, buy that I want it to hell to sell. Yeah, buy that I want it to happen. Jesus, words are hard. Sell that I think it's going to happen because I think he's James Gunn's wanting to disassociate from everything in the past, and I think that also includes the CW and even Smallville. Although I would love to see Rosie come back, and I would also love to see Stephen and Mel come back. Right, right. Yeah, I gotta agree. I'm gonna just hardcore sell both, just because I think it would undermine kind of already the retconning and rebooting steps that we think they've already taken with getting rid of Henry Cavill as Superman, potentially not having Gal Gadot around as Wonder Woman. We'll talk about that. And of course, so many other projects being canceled. It wouldn't make sense to reboot the live action just to bring in some former uh, live live action TV adaptation right. of these exactly. former characters, even though Michael Rosenbaum for the win is the best Top Lex Luthor Lex of Luther. all time. It's hard because it's a TV show, so you get a long time to adapt the characters, but still, those two characters, Stephen Amell included, amazing as Green Arrow. Oh, yeah. Number two, could Christian Bale return in the MCU as a different character after the kind of disappointing run as Gore? Christian Bale said, a good story is a good story. Eleanor, buy or sell that Christian Bale could return in the MCU as a different character. Hard sell. Hard sell. I don't think it's going to happen. I think they're just going to be like, all right, well, we fucked up using Christian Bale, so we're just going to move on from this. I think that would be a good move for them. Don't try to, I think it would be almost be like sloppy seconds. Like, just don't try that again. Just, you mess it up once, just don't look back and move forward. Now, I do think that there's always a there's always a good comeback story, and Christian Bale is one of the most phenomenal actors oh, yes, in Hollywood today. And I think that, yeah, he's yet another example of an actor that was kind of misused as a villain in the MCU. We saw that a lot in the uh, early Phase 1 era of the MCU movie. So I'm going to have to, unfortunately, sell this as well. A good story is a good story, though. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if maybe... 
in phase five or six, they have a certain project in mind where Christian Bale could return, and he would look uh, much different than Gore, of course. Number three, Sentry, a character that neither me or Eleanor are very familiar at all. The only thing I know about him is just what I've read is that he's kind of like a Superman-level OP character in the Marvel Universe. That's pretty much all I know. But there are rumors that Sentry could be appearing in Captain America 4, starring Anthony Mackinney, and maybe even Thunderbolts. Now, Eleanor, Sentry is a character that some Marvel fans have wanted since the early MCU days, and even wanting Sentry solo projects. Now, you're not a big Sentry person. Now, me neither. But from what you know of Sentry as a character who is a godlike character, there's not too many of those that you could say is godlike in the MCU that is still yet to be introduced. Um, now, obviously, if you really scour the MCU and the Marvel library, of course, you're going to be able to find dozens. But with a following like Sentry, eh, I think it's debatable. Do you buy or sell that Sentry could be coming into the MCU very soon? Buy. I think so, because they need a really another tough character in the MCU right now. My brother refers to like characters that don't take damage well, but can do a lot of damage as squishies. I think they have a lot of squishies. Like, yes, Deadpool can be chopped up into little bits and regenerate, but he's kind of squishy because you could probably kill him still. Or like, you know, you don't have like your Superman, like a really invincible person. You got other than Thor, Thor and Hulk, and right? But a you few have like examples. a few. But they need like another superpower. So I could definitely buy this. Definitely. Captain Marvel. There's there's definitely huge powerhouses in the MCU. That's not right. what we're saying. But right. I'm just godlike saying you're... characters that have yet to be introduced, like right. Sentry, right. with a major following, like Sentry. I'm also going to buy this, even though these are still just rumors. I think with the kind of failed introduction of characters like the Eternals, Marvel should be looking at characters like Sentry, and it would make sense for him to show up in projects like this. So I'm going to go ahead and be optimistic about it and give it a buy. Number four, the legendary actor, Harrison Ford, will be stepping in the role as Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, replacing the late William Hurt for 2024's Captain America New World Order, starring Anthony Mackie, as well as the upcoming Thunderbolts movie. Now, there might be some hinting from Harrison Ford himself that he may also be transforming into the Red Hulk. Now, Red Hulk, once again, like Sentry, is a character that neither one of us are very familiar with. But in the comics, Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, who is in the MCU very anti-Avengers, very anti-metahuman, could is now going to be reportedly played by Harrison Ford. When Harrison Ford was asked recently in an interview about why are you now playing in a Marvel comic book movie when you've said in the past you've had fatigue over Star Wars, and he said, well, I want to do things now that I've never done before, and this is something I haven't done before. And they said, okay, well, is there any potential that you could actually be playing a superhero or maybe doing some CGI motion capture? And he smiled, and he kind of did the motion of zipping your lips and locking it like nope i can't say a thing so eleanor with all that being said buy or sell i don't know i would probably have to say sell just because i love harrison ford but he can be kind of like your grumpy old grandpa that like likes things the way they are wants to troll you right exactly so i could see him being like nope i can't tell you that we're doing cgi and everyone gets excited and then the movie comes out and it's like what where's red hulk what are we talking about so i don't know i would probably say sell but harrison ford's a hard one to read i'm gonna buy because unfortunately the way that they've treated mark ruffalo's hulk in the last few mil- movies has kind of been underwhelming and the introduction to she hulk has been very uh critically divisive and they also introduced another hulk in that movie or in that series excuse me so i'm gonna buy that they absolutely totally could and should introduce red hulk it's a character that fans have wanted to see since i remember there were uh rumors of red hulk in the age of ultron days i don't know if i'm alone in that but Harrison Ford as Red Hulk, 
I mean, I, I absolutely would have loved to see William Hurt and may he rest in peace, but seeing even, you know, how Mark Ruffalo is kind of modeled after the mm-hmm. Hulk or the Hulk, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the vice Hulk, versa. Right. Yeah. Seeing Harrison Ford in a Hulk version could be either. I know, that's either... why my brain is just having such <laughs> a hard time. I'm like, horrifying how can Han Solo or be amazing. The Hulk? Right. So I'm going to buy it. And our final buy or sell topic. WB reportedly begged Todd Phillips, director of Joker, to take charge of DC just a few months ago because no one in town wanted it. Now, this was obviously kind of a reactionary move because WB was looking at some of their directors and say, hey, this guy did something really great, took an adaptation, did something that was different, made a billion dollars at the box office, had Oscar nominations and wins, and critical audience and alike loved the movie not everybody of course so they were looking at all of their options and everybody apparently was very scared and hesitant to take this job rightfully so because you don't have a producer working for warner brothers who's produced 14 dc movies before the dc studios dcu was formed like you did with kevin feige or 13 or 14 whatever it was so they were looking at Todd Phillips, who had done, you know, the Hangover movies and Joker and some other movies as well. Some is hit and miss. Some are great. And was looking at him to be the Kevin Feige of the DC Universe. Do you buy or sell this report? Do you believe that it actually happened? Do you believe everything that I said? Or do you think that all of this is just made up and that we should just totally throw this out? Well... I'm going to say that I buy it because I don't think that this is a job that a lot of people wanted. And I heard that in many, 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 many reports. Right. They it were was having a hard time finding people to actually do this job. So I think Peter Safran and James Gunn took a very hard position. And I don't blame Todd Phillips for being like, you know what? I'll pass the buck on that one. I'm not interested. Um yeah, I think that is a really tough position that they found themselves in. I mean, I could go on and on about it, but I'm not going to drone on about it. <laughs> and it's interesting that, honestly, looking back at it now, that back during that time, I remember James Gunn was asked yeah, uh, I remember by rumors fans, about it back and he then. said that the position that Walter Amato and Kevin Feige have, I would never want because it is way more that I could handle. And uh, my my passion is being a director and writing and producing and being in that position, I wouldn't be able to do those things. But here we are today. And it sounds like he's still going to be writing, directing, producing. That's why he has Peter Safran, I guess. And Peter Safran alongside him. So whatever you guys think of all of these, what do you buy and selling that will conclude buy or sell for this week thank you for joining us and we'd love to see what you are buying and selling down in the comments below and our first topic our first main topic not as controversial not as messy as last week so hopefully this week can be a little more chill a little more fun not as much tension (laughs) so with wonder woman 3 being canceled sadness (laughs) why are you doing this to me And Man of Steel 2, of course, not happening. DCU, the DCU, is surrounded by controversy already. Oh, yeah. To say the least. The internet's a nightmare right now. To say the least. And with everything in doubt, all reports are indicating that Gal Gadot will no longer be our Wonder Woman. What will... and, And a question that brought it to my mind is that what will be the legacy years to come when we're thinking back at Gal Gadot's run as Wonder Woman. You know, she was introduced in Batman v Superman kind of as like a, you know, she wasn't a standout role in that uh, movie for me. She was a standout character, I should say, excuse me. Even though the movie was super convoluted, it had too much in it. I do like the movie, but, you know, she was introduced to that, got an amazing first solo outing, first big live action outing for Wonder Woman as a character and was long overdue and it did not disappoint in my opinion and then we got her in two versions of Justice League and I liked her in both versions a lot more in Zack Snyder's right 
And, of course, then we got Wonder Woman 84, which was very controversial, very, very divisive. And most critics and fans kind of bash the movie and think it's hot garbage. You find some fans here and there. And I myself, I liked it when I saw it. I didn't understand why people were comparing it to, like, the worst movies of all time. But that being said, I haven't watched it since. It was kind of forgettable, and it was a little messy. It was a little disappointing. And that's going to be, unfortunately, probably, the final note that we have with Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. And that brings the question, what is going to be kind of how people look back at Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman? Obviously, she's probably going to go off to have a successful career. She's a beautiful actress. She's talented, yada, yada. But what are they going to think about her run as Wonder Woman specifically? Because this has been a role that not only is extremely influential and iconic, but also has been extremely important for her career and her personally. So I myself am a big fan of her. I was a little skeptical when she was cast, not going to lie, just because I had only seen her in a Fast and the Furious film. But I think she's really grown as an actress. I think she's really developed not only her acting skills, but also grown physically in the role. And to to know that we're going to have a new actress in the role does excite me. You know, Gal Gadot is not the best actress in the world. We could find a better actress, sure. But in a lot of ways, she was a perfect Wonder Woman for the Wonder Woman that she was given and the Wonder Woman that she served, at least in my opinion. Looking back, I will regret that we don't get a Wonder Woman 3 just to see if it lived up to the the, uh, hype and the quality of the first film and just having a complete trilogy. But who knows? Maybe it would have been even worse than Wonder Woman 84 and her legacy would have been even more tarnished. At the end of the day, maybe a lot of people don't really care. But these are just my thoughts. I'm going to turn it over to Eleanor. Well, I personally think that... um people go a little too hard on Wonder Woman 84 because I remember really enjoying that film. It was really fun to me. It wasn't as serious as the rest of the DCEU. Yeah, it had its serious moments, but it was a little more messy. I'm sure there was maybe some plot devices that didn't exactly work or seemed like they were kind of plot holes, but overall I really enjoyed that movie, and maybe it's just because I really like Wonder Woman as a character, but I really enjoyed it. And I also really liked Pedro Pascal in it, so I thought it was a good movie. But I personally think that her legacy, like a lot of DCEU legacies, are going to go down as tarnished, incomplete, or just, like, I wouldn't say shameful, but, like, shameful is not the right word, but maybe they will feel ashamed of it, you know, or embarrassed of it because they didn't get their full trilogy. Or it got canceled right in the middle of the storyline. Or it took ten years between first movie to get second movie, you know. There was a lot of that happening in the DCEU. And so I think all of that mixed together is just going to get associated not only with Wonder Woman, but with all of the characters in the DCEU. And... Unfortunately, I think that's why they are going to scrap everything and start over. And it's just hard because I really did like Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. She really did play a great Wonder Woman. She embodied the spirit of Wonder Woman perfectly, I would say. So for me, it's really hard and really sad. But, you know, moving forward, even if you're feeling really negative and upset like I am, like this is just my message to everyone else is just try to stay positive. Because, I mean, we don't know what the future will hold. And if we all are really negative about it, it's not going to make it any better. Maybe failed potential, missed opportunity. That's kind of the feeling, yeah. It's like, it could have been so much more. And it's just not, we're not going to get it. In a lot of ways, a lot of people are always going to remember Gal Gadot as their Wonder Woman. And Henry Cavill as their Superman. I mean, the amount of support for this guy and all of these people, all of the, all of them, has just been amazing. And it's really sad that they couldn't have gotten that support when Man of Steel came right, out. Right? Like, why did it and, take ten years you know, for us to get this? Same thing with like Andrew Garfield as Spider Man. It's like everybody wants Amazing Spider Man three now, but when Amazing Spider Man two came out, it wasn't the case. It was fifty fifty at best. 
And unfortunately, yeah, I think missed opportunity, failed potential is going to be kind of the overall legacy is when a lot of the average movie going audience looks back at the DCEU and maybe some of them don't even remember it. I don't know, but I think there's a lot of wins and a lot of great movies and a lot of some of the best comic book movies I've ever seen. Some of my favorites and Wonder Woman's one of them and Gal Gadot is a big part of that. So she will be missed. She will be missed if she's being recast. I mean, Gal, uh, James Gunn did say on Twitter that he did reply to a, a report that she had gotten the boot. And he said, not sure where you got this report where Gal Gadot got the boot. Um, so that kind of adds some to confusion. So maybe there's some potential that she's it's still on board. Opinion. But honestly, all all signs are pointing to reboot. To me, it's just my opinion that James Gunn needs to get the hell off Twitter because I understand he's trying to clarify things, but now you're just adding fuel to the fire. Just get off Twitter. It is <laughs> a cesspool it anyway. Is adding to the confusion, yeah. It is a dumpster fire anyway. Just get out of it. Like, just leave it alone. <laughs> like, Twitter can be a madhouse sometimes, and right now it is absolutely crazy. <laughs> but what do you guys think of Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman? What did you think of her two films, her outings in Justice League, and what do you think of her overall legacy is going to be as Wonder Woman when fans of the average movie-going audience, as well as DC fans, look back at Wonder Woman in 10 years when we have a new Wonder Woman in the DCU? How do you think she'll live up? Whatever you think, we'd love to hear it. Just keep friendly with each other in the comments as we're all Wonder Woman fans, we're all DC fans, and we're all got our fingers crossed hoping for the best. Some of us have given up hope, but hey, to each their own. And our next main topic, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse revealed another new poster and revealed an army of Spider-Men and Spider-Women across the Spider-Verse. No pun intended. One of the Spider-Men that have a lot of 90s fans buzzing, including myself, is a character that has been hinted at in some of the concept art and by the directors themselves. And that character, of course, is Ben Riley, the Scarlet Spider, as well as many other very iconic, recognizable faces from the comics and other series. We, of course, got our first teaser trailer not too long ago. We know the Spot is going to be a multiverse-type villain. There might be a Spider Civil War of some sort going on. Spider-Man Beyond might be the villain, according to some reports. So much to talk about and more. Eleanor, what are some of the things you liked about the first film and what are you excited about this upcoming installment well i really liked the animation style in the first film and i'm glad that we're going to see more of that and also i mean i loved the wacky spider characters that they brought into the universe all of them had their own different personalities and their own way of being spider-man but all were uniquely spider-man or spider-woman you know they were all uniquely that character but just in different ways. And so I can't wait to see how they expand upon that because I'm sure they're going to add even more into it. We're going to see more spider people. And so a I'm, lot excited. More. I'm excited to see how many of them are out there and how all of them are getting into this spider verse. Like how are the spider people so easily going across multiverses, but Dr. Strange can't do it. And that's his whole shtick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the spot is going to have a large part of that since he's a multiversal type villain. And oh, probably he's like, I connected you. There's a lot people. of theories and reports out there on how that's going to happen. But yeah, I loved the first movie. I mean, Into the Spider-Verse was not a film that I at all had any hope or expectations for. I did not think it looked good in the trailers. None of the trailers sold it to me. The animation was off-putting. The soundtrack was off-putting. I was totally in the minority. And when I finally did sit down and watch it, it was an absolute delight. I totally missed the opportunity to see it in theaters. That will not be the case for this one. <laughs> we will definitely now, see this one. Just seeing the first movie, it sold me on the sequels. But now that I've seen the trailer and some posters, I was jumping over the moon. And then you threw Ben Riley in my face, and you got me a little fanboy in. Because he really did squeal across Scarlet the house, Spider, baby, is coming to theaters <laughs> near you. All right. If you don't got your tickets cooking and your money saving already, I don't know what you're doing, Spidey fans. Let's get it. This is going to be amazing. And one thing I was really skeptical about 
one thing I was really kind of worried about, I guess, was whether or not we were going to get an actual Peter Parker in this movie. I was interested. It was, you know, I don't think they need to have a Peter Parker because it's definitely Miles' movie and uh, Gwen for sure. But the addition of Peter B. Parker and Miles' relationship to some degree should be showcased in this movie, I think, uh, just because that relationship was so awesome and interesting in the first film. So I'd love to see more of that. But if that means less screen time for my boy Ben Riley, who's probably not going to have a whole lot of screen time, let's be honest. They're going to have a lot more for Spider-Man Beyond, Oscar Isaac, of course. And I'm super excited to see that. It looks amazing. Reports that he might be playing the villain or that Spider-Man Beyond might be acting as that. a villain. I could see that. Now, those are just rumors, so take that with a huge grain of salt. But it did look like there was some conflict in the trailer for sure, and it might just be some people jumping to conclusions. Right. But it would be really cool might to be have... swing in their way sp- into conclusions? Oh, that's just bad. <laughs> oh, that's just bad. <laughs> But what what would you think of an into the Spider Verse movie, not or across the Spider Verse movie? Excuse me, not only having the spot as a villain, but an actual Spider Man as a villain potentially. Well, I think it would be interesting and it'd be a definitely a different take on it because I think we've seen a lot of Spider villains, Green over, Goblins, over Doc the Ock, years. yeah, Venom, Sandman, all sorts of people. We've seen them, so I think it would be interesting to see Spider Man himself as a villain. You know. Um, I have never, like, I'm sure it's in the comics somewhere. I'm not a comic, like, expert, but I'm sure it's out there and I've never seen it. But I would love to see it. I'd love to see an evil Spider-Man. It would kind of be like, like, almost like that Justice League, I don't remember which one, where they're on the other planet and all of the Justice League members are bad. The uh, Justice Lords. Yes, because they're Flash died. So I feel like it would be something like that. It would have that kind of feel where you're like, well, this is heartbreaking because my childhood characters are turning against me. So I have a feeling it would feel the same way with Spider-Man, and I'm pretty stoked for that. And when I saw the trailers, like it looks like a fun time. It's got lots of colors and beautiful things about it, so I'm excited to see it, and I love Spider-Man, so and I'm here for it. not only was I surprised that I actually liked this tiny little teaser. It's not a whole lot of the story, so we're still just kind of speculating. And yeah, there's some confirmations out there, and there's some reports and rumors, of course, but part of the fun is totally speculating, right? Right. And all we can do is really speculate from the first teaser. And We all just sit here, rub our hands together, and we're like, yes. This is going to be Oscar Isaac's third comic book movie role, and I just think it's great. I know he's like he's or like superhero jumping role, across. I should say. Yeah, he's jumping across like the MCU. I guess it's all like, Marvel. Yeah, it's all he's Marvel. jumping across Marvel like like it's hopscotch, just like over here, over here, over here, over here, over here. And I'm like, dude, hop into DC already. We're ready. But guys, what do you think about some of these rumors, theories, speculation regarding Spider Man across the Spider Verse? And are are you excited for it? How did you feel about Into the Spider Verse? Were you skeptical like me, or were you on board from the start? We'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on the upcoming film. And, of course, what do you think about Scarlet Spider? You better be on board. And our next topic. With the cancellation of many DC films in development and many DC fans feeling like it's been a rough time lately, one of the upcoming films that we do know is happening, it's been confirmed. It's Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Yes, of course. It's lead star Zachary Levi, who we heard last week say is good friends with James Gunn and Peter Safran as they've worked together and would be willing to bet that friendship on the fact that Shazam will be a big part of their new DCU moving forward. Well, now reports have gone back and forth that Shazam will be recast alongside Wonder Woman's Gal Gadot, Henry Cavill's Superman, and the rest of the DCU. However, Zachary Levi came out and debunked this theory on Twitter, his own Twitter, adding more fuel to the confusion, saying, quote, Oh, I really wouldn't go believing everything you see on the internet. I'm Gucci, Ash. We all Gucci, adding a sunglasses emoji. So, my two theories on this is either A, he's telling the truth, and that moving forward, Zachary Levi, as Shazam, 
is going to be part of the new DCU. And technically, the first Shazam movie, in theory, would be the launching point for James Gunn's new DCU. James Gunn and Peter Safran, excuse me. And Peter Safran was attached. So it would kind of make sense. You didn't see Ben Affleck. You didn't see Henry Cavill. They had Man of Steel suit from the neck down, but you didn't see Henry in there. So on one point, on one side, it kind of makes sense. But my other theory, these comments from Zachary Levi, which it's really sad that this is the point we're at with DC, where this movie is still months away, and he's having to debunk whether or not he's being let go from the role, or he's even going to continue playing the role after his movie, when his movie hasn't even gotten, what, three trailers yet? I think a teaser and a full first trailer? A couple posters and a behind-the-scenes trailer from a few years ago? I mean, it's kind of sad, if you're, a, especially if you're a fan of Shazam. It, what it reminds me of, my other theory, is that a few years ago, well, many years ago now, Comic-Con Ben Affleck is being reported that he's out as Batman right before Justice League is coming to theaters, and he's having to say, no, 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 I would, I'm playing Batman in Matt Reeves' Batman, even though I'm not directing anymore. I would play an ape for Matt Reeves. He's an amazing filmmaker, and I would jump over the moon to be in a film with him. And then, of course, we know that didn't happen. Same, is this the same thing kind of going with Zachary Levi? I could see that as well, because as an actor, you want to play face. And it's, like I said, it's kind of sad that this is where we're at, but you want to say, yeah, guys, everything's good over here. I mean, I'm good friends with these guys. I'd bet my friendship on the fact that I'm playing this role in the future maybe that's his little subtle way of saying no i'm not playing this role and fuck these guys i'm pissed i'm hurt on the outside of course he's probably going to make up but who knows this is really kind of weird james gunn recently said no we're not rebooting everybody except for the suicide squad which got a lot of people thinking okay does that mean you are rebooting everybody including the suicide squad or you're not rebooting as many people as we think and the suicide squad and other characters are still going to be safe maybe one of, maybe that's true and Shazam is one of them i don't know eleanor what do you think about all of this well i have to preface my thoughts with saying i have a very dark take on this Uh-oh. and you and i were talking about this earlier and you were like no 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 no, no. save this save this <laughs> yes, because obviously we were, we're going to have a very different we might. sides on this yes so my thought is if he's still in the role i will be pissed for one reason and one reason only if you're going to get rid of somebody that we're so excited for like henry cavill then I think if you're going to reboot all these people that I love, you wipe the slate clean, you reboot everyone. If you keep even one person, if you keep one background character from Suicide Squad, I'm going to be mad. Because at this point, you've already crushed me so much. Just finish crushing me. Don't, (laughs) like, don't just, like, full gas. Just, like... Run me over with your car. Don't just, like... So you don't want anything good in the DC universe anymore? Because Shazam is great. Why should Zachary well, no, what Levi... I'm saying, what I'm saying is that if you're going to be, like, we're taking away all of this good stuff, but only keeping the stuff we like, it seems shady to me. If you're only keeping the shit that Peter Safran's attached to, or that James Gunn is attached to, which they've never confirmed that that's what the case is going to be. So this is me going out on a limb here. Everyone take this with a snowball's worth of salt. But if you're only going to keep that, then to me that says shady. To me that says, we're keeping what we like and fuck what everyone else likes. At this point, just if you're going to take away these people, screw what any of us like and just start over. Start fresh. Wipe the slate clean. I don't want any reminders from the past. It hurts. I'm over it. Like, I'm so hurt by what they've done so far that it's like, just rip the Band-Aid off completely. And to the me, it feels like only half the Band-Aid is off. If they don't take it all away, you're going to have people that are really, really livid. And either way, they're going to have people that are mad. But I feel like if you start over completely, it's the only way to remedy this situation. 
because my personal feeling on it is, especially with sh- the first Shazam, I don't care if we didn't see Henry Cavill's face. That's Henry Cavill's suit. You can't tell me he's not in that universe somewhere. And if that's, like, if you're going to retcon that, you're going to have to really retcon that. You're really going to have to sweeten the deal for me, you know? But for me, it's like, if that that's Henry Cavill's suit. So you if you're getting rid of Henry Cavill, you have to get rid of everyone that's ever been on screen with that suit. Well, that I includes mean, Shazam's universe. Even Shazam has a different suit in the second movie. So you could ar- make an argument like, oh, this new Superman, let's say it's played by uh, Brad Pitt. <laughs> not, <laughs> not a younger actor, but Brad Pitt. Maybe his first suit was very similar to the Man of Steel suit. But then when we see him in the third Shazam movie, which is your retconning thing you were talking about, he's in his new suit. My only thing is is that it's not, quote-unquote, similar to the Man of Steel suit. It is the Man of well, Steel suit. Well, no, it's similar. It's similar. To me, it looks exactly it's the same. It's similar. It's not identical. Okay, so maybe I'm not looking at the details as much. Or I'm too it's hurt. It's very nitpicky. Too, I'm too hurt and sad. Very nitpicky. Too hurt and sad for this. But like, it's definitely like it's definitely screaming, oh, that should be Henry Cavill right, there. Right, exactly. And There's that's no why denying I'm like, that. That's why I'm like, this is hurtful to me. Like... James, you already hurt me. Like, Derek was trying to talk to me about this last week. He's like, well, how are you feeling about Henry Cavill? I'm like, I don't want to talk about Henry Cavill. Go away. Like, leave me alone. I need time to process. And he's like, but are, he's like, are you feeling okay about this DC stuff? Right, I'm like, go right, away. I'm right. not feeling okay. That's how you okay. and everybody else is feeling. But should Zachary Levi suffer? Because that's how you're feeling about Henry Cavill. Why should Zachary Le- Levi, a Shazam movie, which sure didn't break... All sorts of box office records didn't win an Oscar and wasn't for everybody. It didn't break the uh, genre uh, walls that is the comic book genre. It didn't redefine anything. It was a fun, uh, family-friendly, full of heart, humor, and action comic book movie that I absolutely loved. And a lot of audience and critics loved as well. And the movie made money on a smaller relatively smaller budget with no baggage no martha scene attached to it no jesse eisenberg attached to it no pushed in no uh studio interference attached to it and in a lot of ways felt very different than movies like man of steel one the first wonder woman batman versus superman both versions of justice league and i'm a fan of all of those movies a big fan of all of those movies I don't care about the Martha scene, but a lot of people do. Shazam doesn't have that. So that's my argument to that. I'm not, I'm not saying I think they should keep Shazam and the Suicide Squad, but I know a lot of people think that they should and that they should build off of what quote unquote has worked before. But like you said, Who's to say what has worked and what hasn't? Because Henry Cavill's Superman has worked. He is born to play the role. He's an amazing Superman. But a lot of people don't feel that way. A lot of people don't feel that way about those movies. Yeah, for me personally, it's just like, it's like, um, you know, you wouldn't have a couch that's half on fire and half not and be like, well, we're just going to save the half of the couch that's not on fire and work from that. Like, I'm sorry. You just buy a new couch at that point. Hopefully you have a warranty. If you have a really nice coffee table that's next to the couch. But it's not next to the couch. It was part of the couch. (laughs) It was a throw pillow in the middle of the flames. Okay, I'm sorry. If it was a throw pillow, then it was at the very foot. What's the thing called that you put your feet up on? Oh, the recliner? No, not the recliner. On the the ottoman. On the ottoman. If anything, it was on the ottoman. (laughs) And it was like hanging off the edge. But enough couch analogies. What do you guys think <laughs> about Shazam? Do you think Zachary Levi is being honest and that he has a future in the DCU going forward? Are you on my side where you think maybe this guy shouldn't be punished or not? Maybe punished isn't the right word, but shouldn't be recast alongside other actors and their roles who have done great jobs just because James Gunn and Peter Safran feel like they need to recast characters like henry cavill or are you on eleanor's eleanor's hard side which is (laughs) no reboot everybody or don't even bother 
which is kind of honestly the side I'm on too. But I, for the pl- for the sake of argument, you got to hear multiple sides. And of course, there's other sides that we'd love to hear your takes on down in the comments below. And moving on to our fourth topic, also regarding James Gunn, which is... Jesus Christ. <laughs> welcome to the James Gunn Media Podcast. Has been a more busier CEO on Twitter than most CEOs of major film studios. And one thing he confirmed on there was that in January, we are going to be getting a look at a few of the newest DC projects they are developing currently. Hopefully, they will give us major insight and hopefully some excitement. I know that probably sounds like an extremely improbable outcome for some of you, but fingers crossed... But that is confirmation from the horse's mouth. We are getting multiple or a few new DC project announcements in just a couple of weeks. Eleanor, what do you think? So I still stick by my earlier statement of James Gunn needs to get off of Twitter because it's only fanning the flames. But Just I, adding to the confusion. It is, or... and it's just adding to, like, even though he's trying to clear it up, people are taking stuff and running with it just based upon, like, what he's saying. So I'm like, just maybe take it back a notch and, like, let's just step back Spree. away from Twitter. Right. Give people time to process the information you've given them before you keep throwing more information out there. Because at this point... Like, I don't know, like, if other people are feeling this way. I'm just still so angry about what's happened and the cancellations, and I'm still processing that emotionally. Like, it's almost like a family member's moved away. Like, it hurts. And so, for me, I'm just like, who cares about 2023 and January and what he has planned? I'm still sad. But who knows? In a month's time, I'll probably feel different. And if he's like... But but Eleanor, look over here. I, I have a new shiny movie for you. I might be like, mm, okay, I see, I see. I'm on board. So who knows? I am kind of right there with you. I am still mourning the loss of Henry Cavill's Superman. He was my favorite Superman. And Gal Gadot. And, argu- well, reportedly Gal Gadot. It's still not been confirmed by James Gunn and Peter Safran. So for all we know, she could be still in the DCU. But it's probably looking like full reboot. Let's be honest. I got to say that I'm excited. I want to know what this new Superman movie is going to be about. I want to know, is it going to be anything like Man of Steel? Is it going to have inspirations or draws from it? Because I think Man of Steel arguably is the greatest comic book movie of all time. And I think it would be amazing to see something of a sequel to that movie. That's not going to happen, unfortunately. But as a Superman fan, I'm still excited for the future. And it has been fun far too long since we have had a superman movie period whether it's an elseworld story or whatever thankfully we've at least had superman and lois to kind of hang us over for the last couple of years if you're up to date i myself am not totally complete on season two but superman is a character that has been sorely lacking in dc and in film fandom in general and the thought that we're going to be getting some sort of insight into whatever project that may be, whether it's major villain or setting, story, any other characters that might be a popping up in the movie. He said major characters will be in it. Whatever that major character may be, Perry White, Lois Lane, or it could be Batman. Who knows? But I also want to see, he's also teased Green Lantern. And I want to see, okay, is that going to be one of the earlier movies in the DCU? I think that would be a good idea. Set up Superman and Green Lantern first. Characters that haven't been around in a while. And then also maybe set up one that we have a lot of question marks, like Wonder Woman. I don't know what they're going to do with Aquaman and Flash. Maybe they shelve the characters till like Phase 2 or the end of Phase 1. Who knows? But I, d- I, th- I think we're going to get some interesting characters that are the iconic ones first some interesting movies some interesting ideas and i'm excited for those interesting ideas but i also think we're going to get a couple of those lesser known characters in the early stage sprinkled in here and there do you have any off the top of your head that either you're expecting or hoping for movies you'd like to see i said superman green lantern uh, maybe some insight into what the future of Wonder Woman holds. I think that's a huge 
property that should be utilized. And of course, it is Speed Force Media Podcast, so obviously I'm looking forward to see what James Gunn does with The Flash, Barry Allen, Wally West, whatever it may be. Those are mine. Eleanor, what are some of yours, is, if any? Or are you just at the point where you're like, nah, if it's not Man of Steel 2, I'm not excited. And I get that. I really, really do. I'm just trying to be optimistic. Although I feel down in the dumps like that, I honestly, like, I am trying to stay positive about it. And I'm hoping for the best no matter what slate they come up with. Even if it is recasting everyone, then at least, you know, they have a plan going forward. But I'm hoping that we can see, you know, maybe Green Arrow. Maybe Black Canary. Maybe Poison Ivy or Nightwing, or somebody like that, like, bring somebody in that is maybe not as well known, maybe even Lobo, you know, because that one's been heavily rumored too, Lobo, like, bring somebody in that, you know, maybe a little lower budget, so they don't have to shell out a bunch of move, a bunch of moolah on this, right, and, you know, bring in somebody we haven't seen before, but somebody I'm really, really, really wanting to see is the reverse Flash, too, I want to know where Earbard Thawn is. He's such an iconic character, and he's been severely lacking from any well, DC movies so is ever. so the Flash. <laughs> Gotta get the Flash first to get reverse Flash. Right, and I'm like, I want to see both of them, and, you know, I always seem to bring up villains for some reason, but... Because they're the best, especially in DC, you got... They're so good. <laughs> one could argue DC should be blowing Marvel out of the, out of the park... Just because of their villains alone. Yeah, like, you why can't we get a totally... Red Hood movie? Hello? Like, you can get a dude in a red mask to shoot people. I'm sure it would work. Look at Deadpool. <laughs> but, guys, what do you think? Are you interested in any of these upcoming project announcements from James Gunn that's just coming up in January? Or are you just disappointed from all of the latest cancellations, the rumors, speculations? Whatever you think, we'd love to hear your insight down in the comments below. And moving on to our fifth topic, James Gunn was also asked on Twitter on if his films in the DCU under DC Studios will ever suffer from studio interference. Films that are infamously known for studio interference in the DCEU is a perfect example of how it can be devastating to a story and film production, as well as the overall quality of the film. Films like Batman v Superman, Suicide Squad, and the theatrical cut of Justice League are prime examples. Marvel Studios, on the other hand, interferes with their movies all the time, and Phases 1, 2, and 3 are perfect examples of how studio interference in the right setting can be a major success. Gunn has now stated that his films won't suffer from studio interference because his role is much different than Zack Snyder's, because him and Safran would be the studio, head, studio heads interfering like Feige used to be. I myself love these comments for multiple reasons, despite Gunn killing my dreams of seeing Cavill Superman again. I do think that the setup for DC Studios and the setup for the DCU, where you have these figureheads in charge, this one vision, you got it planned out from the start, something that the Star Wars sequel trilogy should have had with Kathleen Kennedy, and I think we could all agree with that, agree on that. Right, yes. And, in, and uh, you could make the argument that the DCEU should have also had that, because when Man of Steel... Of course, everyone's been asking for that for years. Right, for years and years and years. Man of Steel which is one of my favorite comic book movies of all time, maybe my favorite. I think, well, it's, it's known. It was not made originally intended to set up a shared universe. It was a film that was kind of sprung board off of The Dark Knight Rises when that film was being uh, worked on and was under production. So that universe was never truly set up for success even though it launched with a great film in my opinion it was never you know batman didn't show up in the post credit scene you didn't have that nick fury connective tissue right. iron man was did feel very independent which is why i love it so much it's a marvel movie that you don't have crossovers every five seconds and references to other things and future projects it's why it still holds up so good but you do still have that connective tissue by the end of the film. And in 
The Incredible Hulk and Thor, Captain America the First Avenger, and then of course it leads up beautifully to The Avengers. Of course, you got Iron Man 2 in there, sorry, I forgot. But DCU is never set up that way. The DCU is going to be DC Studios, its own film studio. It's not it has nobody to answer to. There's no Walter Hamada. There's no Kevin Sujahara. There's it's just David it's Zaslav. Just David Zaslav James Gunn, Peter Safran. That's it. That's it. And James Gunn, Peter Safran, seems like they're going to get most control. Of course, they're going to still have to answer to their big boss. But there's nobody else that's going to come in and tell James and James Gunn, Peter Safran, or directors working under them and say, hey, you got to take out this and this, take out 30 minutes of the movie, uh, throw in Doomsday, uh, could you introduce the Justice League in this movie? Because we want to change Man of Steel 3 to actually Justice League, Man of Steel 2 to Batman vs. Superman. Oh, Suicide Squad? Uh, we want to have a movie trailer company come in and re-edit the movie because it's too dark. Batman vs. Superman was too dark and this movie's too dark. And Oh, Justice League, we kind of did do the same thing. Bye, Zach. Hey, Joss, can you come over from Marvel? And here we are today. It's None nice. of that baggage is going to happen at least not from studio interference i think it's a great thing that dc fans are going to have a studio dedicated a a film studio dedicated to movies just for us there's no competition there's no other competing budgets within that one studio of course it's still all under warner brothers but a one studio dedicated to nothing but batman Flash, Wonder Woman, Supergirl, Green Lantern, Zatanna, gr- whoever. Isn't that what we've all been kind of wanting? When, Especially if you're a DC fan and you're looking at the MCU, and maybe the MCU hasn't been your cup of tea, and you're just thinking, man, it would be great if we had three or four Justice League movies. Or maybe if we had a Flash trilogy by now. Hell, we've got three Guardians and a Holiday special got three ant-man movies can't get one flash that's how i feel what but moving forward i'm pretty optimistic that we could get a flash trilogy we could get a just league trilogy or whatever because it's being set up for success even though it's not going to have my favorite superman in it so will it live up to the hype will it live up to what has came before i don't know but it's definitely being set up that way what do you think? So I do have some concerns. I do like the idea of it being set up and having little to no studio interference. I do think some, like in the case of Kevin Feige, he's saying, you know, let's go. My story's going this direction. Let's go this direction. Like, I think that's fine for studio interference as long as, you know, directors, writers, everyone who's going into the movie knows what the vision is first instead of being like, oh, no, no, no. We're changing everything you're doing last minute. Like that I'm done with. Definitely. My big worry is James Gunn is taking a lot of pages from Kevin Feige's book, right? He's obviously learned a lot, and he's going to apply what he's learned. What I'm scared of is I am one of those DC fans who likes Marvel, but not necessarily MCU. A big thing that Derek hears from me is the MCU flavor. I don't like it. It's sometimes like it bleeds into everything, and I like things when they feel connected but feel individual. And for me, the MCU doesn't quite have that. Not all the time. There are some movies that are exceptions. I'm worried that the DCU is going to go that exact same direction, and it's all going to feel either Marvelized or it's going to have its own DCU flavor, and all of it's going to be like that. And I hope that it's not all like Suicide Squad and Peacemaker. Because I do like those projects, but Superman is not that. Batman is not that. Wonder Woman is not that. None of those characters are that. So I just hope that James Gunn has the respect for the characters that Kevin Feige obviously does for Marvel. But enough respect for the characters in the DC universe that, you know, don't take it all in one direction, at least still have the films have their own individuality and everything can have connective tissue without it all being the same. It doesn't all have to feel like 
the exact same thing over and over and over and over and over. And that's what I've heard, like, I've had family members and friends that have told me, like, oh, I gave up on the MCU because it just all is the same thing over and over and over and over again. Which I can agree to, to a point. But there is definitely unique things in each film and in the MCU that people like, obviously. I'm in the minority here saying that, you know, MCU isn't necessarily always for me. But I do like certain movies, like, um, I love the Russo Brothers movies in those in that universe so i hope that you know he takes all the right pages from kevin feige and leaves behind some of the stuff that i think is not needed in dc we don't need to have all of them feel you know like you could have sky beam here sky be there sky beam there and it all you know feels very much the same sameness. tone yes i'd like Tone, exactly differences in tone in each movie is important because not every character has the same tone because the flash he's very light-hearted he's very spunky he's very funny especially when it's wally west he's very jokey and you know even barry allen they're kind of writing him very similar but that's a whole nother conversation but wonder <laughs> woman Wonder Woman is not like that. She does have some humor. Sure. But her humor is a little more dry because she's lived on an island with ladies the entire time. She doesn't always understand everyone's references. And, you know, with Superman, yes, he's funny, but it's kind of dad humor. And then there's Batman where, like, especially if you look at Kevin Conroy's, he just roasts people. <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah. he's very dark most of the time. Yeah. So I think if you change a lot of the way these characters feel so they all have the same flavor, it'll end up feeling like how <laughs> I felt with, like, Joss Whedon's Justice League where I was like, oh, that's not Batman. That's Iron Man with Batman's face. Oh, that's not Aquaman. That's Thor with Aquaman's face. Like, that's how that movie felt to me. So I'm just hoping we don't go that direction. And I know that that was Joss Whedon, that wasn't James Gunn, but I just hope we're not going all in one one tone. One tone. And we need differences because otherwise, then the comic book genre feels tired, and I don't want it to feel tired. I want absolutely. it to feel new. I want it to feel fresh. I want to go into this optimistically. So that's just my only problem. But less studio interference, where we're not seeing crap that happened in the past, like with Kevin Sujahara and with Walter Hamada. I'm all for that. And I hope that they're going forward with, you know, it seems like they're taking their time. So I'm going to try not to judge them so harshly because I did kind of bring the gavel down on them when they cut out Henry Cavill. But I'm still going to try to have some sort of optimism because I do love the DC characters so much. And I just want to see them get the movies and the universe they deserve finally. And you want a different difference in tone. You don't want everything to have the same tone, which one could argue I, I myself don't agree with this, but some people's criticisms of like Man of Steel was that it seemed like it was going for like a Nolan tone or too realistic or too dark of a tone. And although I don't agree with that, I could see why, I could people, see say why that. people could say, yeah, not everybody can have the same tone as Batman. Not everybody can have the same tone as Peacemaker. Right. And it's funny that you mentioned that because there was this report that James Gunn during Peacemaker when the concept of having Aquaman in a quick scene, one of the ideas was actually having Aquaman fuck a fish, reportedly. Now, James Gunn w wasn't able to obviously get that, and he, it sounds like that what was... What are we going for, now, the deep? It sounds like that was more of a joke than anything, that, that he was just trying to see how far he could go, and so I think it wasn't actually going to happen, but... That was my very first thought. I was like, what is this, the boys? Like, that would right. not work. You know what that kind of reminds me of? You know when you ask your parents for, like, two things? You ask them for something really crazy like a pony and then for something not as crazy like an iPod. But because the ask for the pony is so crazy, they go, you know what? The iPod isn't as crazy as I thought and they get you the iPod anyway. I feel like James Gunn was like, okay, so he can't fuck a fish, but can he at least show up and they make and a they joke talk about, about it? it? Right. So it would kind of, you know, would kind of make sense, would connect some dots. And I do think like shows like Suicide Squad, The uh, Peacemaker are so good because they're so different in tone than everything else. They're so much different than Man of Steel 
Batman versus Superman. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I think, like you, you made a great point that a lot of these movies do feel the same. It's part of the reason why I miss 20th Century Fox so much and their X Men movies because they were different. They were so much different. They always had a message get... in each one. Well, not in each one. Okay, in They're, the really good uh, ones. <laughs> let's let's be honest. As as big of a fan as I am, half of those movies were iffy, half not. Half of them were great, but some of those movies Warner Brothers and Disney would never have made. So, yeah, that's another reason. But what do you guys think about all of this? I know we've talked about a great deal of things, whether it's be studio interference, the setup for DC and DC Studios, uh, James Gunn, whatever you think. We'd love to hear your insight and your perspective on all of this. And that brings us to our final topic as we are going well overboard well over time this week of Christmas, but hey, there's a lot to talk about. Merry we're having Christmas, fun. y'all. <laughs> we're having fun. And unfortunately, we're going to end it on a rather, I don't know if it's a negative note. On some of you, you might think it's hilarious. Some of you might uh, be disappointed and others might just not care. The Hollywood <laughs> Reporter once again has reported that not only Black Adam lost money, but that Dwayne Johnson was done as Black Adam. And that Dwayne and James, and with that, Dwayne and James Gunn have hopped on Twitter and basically confirmed as much. And it sounds like Black Adam is no longer going to be a part of the DCU moving forward. And and I quote from Dwayne Johnson's Twitter: If the Hollywood Reporter will let me pull up the article. James Gunn and I connected, and Black Adam will not be in their first chapter of storytelling. However, DC and Seven Bucks have agreed to continue exploring the most valuable ways Black Adam can be utilized in future DC multiverse chapters. Now, he went on to say some, some more comments. of, uh, But with that being said, it sounds like he is not, and it sounds very similar to the same comments we got regarding Henry Cavill's uh, no longer being Superman announcement, was that our plan is going for this and that we are excited to work for work with him in the future. And it's kind of the same thing with this post from Dwayne Johnson. He almost makes it sound like he also kind of had a say in walking away from it. He kind of insinuated that. At least that's that's, that's, that's <laughs> some some people are... Uh, interpreting it that way you can interpret it your own way and find the exact quote yourself but it sounds like seven bucks productions which is dwayne johnson's production company and dc james gunn peter safran black adam dwayne johnson are all separating ways splitting ties and going into different ventures he also mentioned marvel in the post saying that I'll always continue to root for DC and then in parentheses and Marvel. And a lot of people are speculating like, oh, could that be him saying like, hey, I'm done at DC now, Marvel, Kevin Feige, you want to come scoop me up? Um, I don't know if they're going to go with that because of all much baggage now Black Adam and Dwayne Johnson has, which is kind of crazy. There's been a lot of tea with that. It almost seems like... You know, hate to say this, but it almost seems like they're trying to cancel him. I don't know if cancel culture is still a thing or not. I'm not hip and cool, so I don't know. But who knows? It seems like Black Adam has really kind of done some damage to Dwayne Johnson's IP, which was not to be predicted going forward. I mean, not by everybody, anyways. But yeah, man. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Black Adam as a character from the comics. I've waited my entire life for a Black Adam movie and for an adaptation. Well, not for a Black Adam movie, but just to see the character be adapted in a live action format or even hell get an own animation movie. That's longer than, you know, an hour. Right. And being able to see Black Adam live action was a dream come true. It was a little bit of a disappointment. It was not the greatest DC film I've ever seen, but it definitely was not the worst. And I thought Johnson was okay in the role. And I thought he looked great in the role. That being said, if Peter uh, Peter Safran, James Gunn, want to use Black Adam in the future, and they say, you know what, we're going to get more of an Egyptian actor. 
one that has uh, a widow's peak hairline. Maybe we give some pointy ear prosthetics. You don't need all of that. But has more of a, an accent, more is familiar, more, seems more like he's from Kondok or an Egyptian-like country. And although Dwayne, you know, is... Kind of like Injustice. Right. More, I guess you could say, you could argue traditional. Um, but right. some, some people's problems with Black Adam was that although he did speak Kondaki in the very beginning of his resurrection, he immediately spoke English after the fight scene and had no accent, no hair, no pointy ears, which is a lot of, you know, iconic elements to Black Adam, even though it's just his image, his appearance. You know, it kind of, I don't know, it adds something cool to him. You look at Namor uh, at Marvel, in a lot of ways, he almost looks like Black Adam. In a lot of ways. Yeah, he's got the pointy ears. He's got, he's got the, the pointy ears, peak. and he's got the hair. He's got the skin complexion. Um, and I think moving forward, if they want to reboot Black Adam and don't use Dwayne Johnson, I won't lose sleep over it. In fact, I'd be excited after seeing the Black Adam movie and that the kind of lost potential of the character because he is a complex emotional character with great motivations and origin story and multiple stories they could tell that with that character and a lot of people think they shit the bed i don't necessarily think that but they didn't nail it out of the park either so if they want to move in a different direction in the future i'm on board i don't know if we'll ever see the character again i hope we do i don't know if anybody cares or if they're just always going to associate the character of black adam with dwayne johnson because of how big Dwayne Johnson is as a character, but I got to say, I am a little bit uh, disappointed on one hand, but still excited for the future. I'm not devastated. Eleanor, what are you thinking about this? Because you're not a big Black Adam comic book reader. He's not, you know, Batman of, or anything. He's not super iconic. What do you think about somebody else maybe playing the role in the future and Dwayne Johnson no longer being Black Adam? Honestly, I'd be kind of relieved because of how much stuff has happened. Like, yeah. I thought it was kind of cringy when he was like, the hierarchy of power is about to change. Like, for me, I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Every time for I heard like it. six months. I, yeah, I was cringing every time. I'm like, could we not? Please, you're taking the air out of my sails. And so I think, like, you know, I think it would be a good idea. Just start fresh. Like, like, just I could see why they'd want to get away from it, too, because there's been... Twitter drama, there's been the Hollywood Reporter firing, and then Black Black Adam, Jesus, look at me. Dwayne Johnson firing back, and then the Hollywood Reporter firing back again, and then Dwayne Johnson saying no, and I'm like, okay, stop. Just somebody please show the spreadsheet with the numbers so we can all stop talking about this, because either it lost money or it didn't, and at this point, we just need a number. I think it's a pretty much official that it didn't. Right. But like, that's just me. That's just my guess. I'm like, for me, I'm just like, I just want to see the numbers, okay? I just want to see that, like, I just need the numbers. I just need the spreadsheet. We're not going to get it, obviously. But, you know, just some confirmation that is in black ink that tells us yes or no. I mean, at the <laughs> end so of the day. Just so we can stop talking about it. <laughs> at the end of the day, we're going to stop talking about it because... The character is no more. We're not getting a sequel, and he's not going to play the figured, character anymore. Honestly, especially after like Henry Cavill, like allegedly, reportedly right. fired um, Dwayne the Rock Johnson's ex-wife as his manager and stuff. So I could just see like, okay, there's a lot of severance happening here. So when he was like, oh, well, we'll work together in the future, I'm like, this is his nice way of saving face, saving his dignity, and saying, I'm done with that. I'm closing the chapter on that book. And uh, hello, Marvel. I'm here if you want me. And I don't know, Kevin Feige might be like, sure, I got something for you. You're huge, and here's a role where we need someone who's huge. But I don't know, because Dwayne Johnson's a very talented, very nice guy. But I just don't see him as, like, an actor kind of like Henry Cavill who can really adapt to a role like that. The roles kind of adapt to... Carry the film. Right. Where the role kind of adapts, in my mind, more to Dwayne Johnson. Right. He brings his own charisma, his own sense of humor and sensibilities, and his own strengths as an actor. To it, yes. And I think 
you kind of need something a little bit stronger than that right. for a character like Black Adam. And right. Black Adam's not just punchy punchy with some jokes. He's not a jokey funny guy. I mean, Although yeah. It was awesome he having does, the Rolling Stones in slow motion. I guess I should I should change that. There are interpretations, especially in the newer comics, especially in Rebirth and New 52 where he does have a more sense of humor. He is much much more of really just a hero than even an anti-hero or a villain. And I think they should have introduced him as a villain first. That way the redemption arc feels sweeter. That way when he becomes an anti-hero, it's a little, yeah, it's a little more sweeter. Like when we were introduced to the Punisher in Daredevil Season 2, if you've seen that. He was terrifying. Well, he shot Daredevil in the head, and he was killing people left and right, and... So originally, we're like, okay, this guy's psycho, he's crazy, but we're going to end up loving him. But right now, he's definitely kind of our antagonist in our very, very first meeting with him. Not only that, the actor's just good at doing that. Right, John Bernthal. As the episodes (laughs) go on, we obviously get more backstory, and he becomes more of an anti-hero and then just full-on hero. They could have done the same thing with Black Adam and just introduced him as a villain as opposed to giving him his own solo movie. I think that's where... The, the the mistake was one. made is that he should have been like a Loki, a Loki character backing up a, in a Shazam movie, Captain Marvel movie, and then maybe utilizing him in a Justice League movie down the down the line, and that's when he can fight Superman. But set him up with Captain Marvel first, and even though by Captain Marvel we mean Shazam, sh- sorry Shazam, yes, and uh, by by the end of it, I gotta say you know. Although I'm happy that we got a Black Adam movie, I will own it on Blu-ray when it comes out. I'm all right with getting another crack at it, and I hope we do. There's no, there's no confirmation that we will, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we do, and an, another Shazam. But what do you guys think about all of this? Black Adam, Dwayne Johnson is no more. Now there is still a sliver of hope. There is still that little message at the very end that says we're hopeful for the future can't wait to cross over soon and uh maybe there's a chance of that maybe james gunn says there's no way we could let the ip of dwayne johnson go and we're just gonna soft reboot dwayne johnson's black adam maybe there's a huge possibility of that and we're just overlooking it whatever you think we'd love to hear it in the comments down below thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Sweet Force Media podcast this week. Or whatever it's called. (laughs) And if you guys are listening on YouTube, if you could please click that subscribe button, give us a like, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. If you are listening on Spotify, Samsung Podcasts, Amazon Music, or another podcast service, leave us a five-star review as it does help us reach more followers like you. And please subscribe for more content. And also for everyone who celebrates... Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everyone, no matter what you celebrate. Make sure to come back on Saturday for our second podcast, the Slasher Saturday podcast. And of course, the highlight of the week, as it is every week, Sunday, Shipwreck Sunday, hosted on our sister channel by my wife, Eleanor. Make sure to check that out for a good palate cleanser. And of course, you don't have to check it out on Christmas Eve, Christmas, or on any of the holidays that you guys celebrate, but make sure to check it out whenever you can starting out next week. Hope you all have a great holiday weekend and, of course, a happy new year. That will be it for us. Until next time. Please remember to iron your capes.